but with the millions of people protesting, there is nevertheless taking us back to the most difficult of trials. You have the trial, like you mentioned, that's going on now of Derek Chauvin, of one of the police officers involved. Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions on this trial where the law, the process of the law is trying to proceed in the face of so much racial tension? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting trial. I've I've been keeping an eye on it there in jury selection now today as we're we're talking. Uh, so a lot's going to depend on what sort of jury gets selected. Uh, yeah, how the uh, sorry to take uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but uh, so one of the interesting qualities of this trial, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the cameras are allowed in the courtroom at least during the jury selection, so uh, so you get to watch some of this stuff. And uh, the other part is the jury selection. Again, I'm very inexperienced, but it seems like selecting an, what is it, unbiased jury <laughs> is really difficult for this trial. It's it almost like, I mean, I, I don't know, uh, me as a listener, like lis you know, listening to people uh, that are trying to talk their way into the jury kind of thing, trying to decide, is this person really unbiased? Or are they just trying to hold on to their like deeply held emotions mm -hmm. and trying to get onto the jury? I mean, it's an incredibly difficult process. I don't know if you can comment on a case so difficult, like the ones you've mentioned before. How do you select a jury that represents the people and doesn't and, and carries the sort of the ideal of the law? Yeah, so a couple things. So first, yes, it is televised and it will be televised as they say, gavel to gavel. So the entire trial, the whole, so thing. The whole thing is going to be televised. So uh, people are getting uh, a view of how uh, laborious jury selection can be. Uh, I think as of yesterday, they had picked six jurors and it's it's taken a week and they have to get to 14. Uh, so uh, they've got, you know, uh, probably another week or, or more to, to, to do. I've been in jury trials where it took a month to choose a, a jury. So that, that's the most important part. You have to you have to choose the right uh, sort of jury. So unbiased in the criminal justice system has a particular meaning. And it, it means that uh, that uh, it, let me tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that a person uh, is not aware of the case. Uh, it also does not mean that a person hasn't formed an opinion about the case. Those are two popular misconceptions. Uh, what it does mean is that notwithstanding whether uh, an individual has formed an opinion, notwithstanding whether an individual knows about the case, uh, that individual can set aside any prior opinions, can set aside any notions that they've developed about the case and listen to the evidence presented at trial in conjunction with the judge's instructions on how to uh, understand and view that evidence. So if a person can do that, then they're considered unbiased. Uh, so, you know, as a longtime uh, defense attorney, uh, I, you know, I would be hesitant in a big case like this to pick a juror who's never heard of the case or anything going around. Because I'm thinking, well, who is this person and what 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 in the world do they do? Uh, uh, so uh, or, or are they lying to me? I mean, how can you not have heard about uh, this case. Um, so they may bring other pro problems. So, I, you know, I don't mind so much people who've heard about the case or folks who've formed initial op opinions. Uh, but you, 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 what you don't want is people who uh, have tethered themselves to that opinion uh, in a way that, uh, you know, they can't be convinced uh, otherwise. So, um, but you also have people who, uh, as you suggested, who just lie because they want to get on the jury or lie because they want to get off the jury. So sometimes people come and say, you know, uh, the most yeah. ridiculous, outrageous, offensive things uh, to know because they know that they'll get excused for yeah. cause. And others who uh, you can tell uh, really badly want to get on the jury. So yeah. they're, you know, they're just they pretend to be the, the, the most uh, neutral, unbiased person in the world. 
uh, what the law calls the reasonable person. We have in law the reasonable person standard. Yeah. Uh, and I would uh, tell my class the uh, you know the the reasonable person in in real life is the person that you would be least likely to want to have a drink with. They're the most <laughs> boring, uh, neutral, not interesting sort of person in the world. And so a lot of jurors uh, th- engage in the performative act of presenting themselves as the most sort of even killed, rational, reasonable person because they really want to get on the jury. Yeah, there's an interesting uh, question. I apologize. I haven't watched a lot because it is very long. I've, I've watched it. <laughs> Uh, you know, th- there's there's certain questions you've asked in the jury, uh, you ask in the jury selection. It's, I remember, uh, I think one jumped out at me, which is, uh, you know, something like, uh, th- does the fact that this person is a police officer make you f- feel any kind of way about them? So trying to get at that, you know, I, I don't know what that is. I guess that's bias. Mm-hmm. And that's such a difficult question to ask, like I asked myself of that question, like how much, you know, we all kind of want to pretend that we're not racist and we don't uh, judge, we don't have, we're like these, per- <laughs> we're the reasonable human, but, you know, legitimately asking yourself, like, are you, what are the, what are the prejudgments you have in your mind? Uh, is that even impossible for a human being, like when you look at yourself in the mirror and think about it, is it possible to actually answer that? Yeah, I look, I uh, I do not believe that people can be completely unbiased. We all have baggage and bias and bring it wherever we go, including to court. What you want is to try to find a person who can at least recognize when a bias is working and actively try to do the right thing. That's the best we can we, we can ask. So if a juror says, yeah, you know, look, I grew up in a place where I tend to believe what police officers say. That's just how I grew up. But if the judge is telling me that I have to listen to every witness equally, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do my best and I won't weigh that testimony any higher than I would any other testimony. If you have someone answer a question like that, that sounds more sincere to me. Uh, sounds more honest. And if you want a person, you want a person to try to do that. And then in closing arguments, right, as the lawyer, right, I'd say something like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we chose you to be on this jury because you swore that you would do your level best to be fair. That's why we chose you. And I'm confident that you're going to do that here. So when you heard that police officer's testimony, the judge told you, you can't give more credit to that testimony just because it's a police officer. And I trust that you're going to do that and that you're going to look at witness number three, you know, John Smith. You're going to look Mm -hmm. at John Smith. John Smith has a different recollection and you're duty bound, duty bound to look at that testimony and this person's credibility you know, the same degree as that other witness, right? And now what you have is just a he said, she said matter, and this is a criminal case. That has to be reasonable doubt, and, right? So, you know, so you, and, and really someone who's trying to do the right thing, uh, it's helpful. But no, you're not going to just find 14 people with no biases. That's that's absurd. Well, that's, that's fascinating that, uh, especially the way you're inspiring, the way you're speaking now is... Uh, I mean, I guess you're calling on the jury. That's kind of the whole system. Is you're calling on the jury, each individual on the jury, to step up and really think, you know, to to step up and be their uh, most thoughtful selves. Actually, yeah. most introspective. Like you're trying to basically ask people to uh, be their best selves, and that's and they. I, I guess a lot of people step up to that. <laughs> yeah, a lot that's of why the do. system works. I'm very. I'm I'm very pro jury. Uh, juries they they get it right. It works a lot of the time, most of the time, and they really work hard to do it. So, what do you think happens? I mean, maybe uh, I'm, I'm not so much on the legal side of things, but on the social side, it's like with the O.J. Simpson trial. 
do you think it's possible that Derek Chauvin does not get convicted of the, what is it, second degree murder? Uh, how do you think about that? How do you think about the potential social impact of that? The the riots, the protests, the, either, either, either direction. Any words that are said, the tension here could be explosive, especially with the cameras. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, there's certainly a possibility that he, he'll he be acquitted um, for homicide charges, um, for the jury to convict. Uh, they have to make a determination as to Officer Chauvin's, former Officer uh, Chauvin's state of mind, uh, whether he intended to cause some harm, whether he was grossly reckless in causing harm, so much so that he disregarded a known risk of death or serious bodily injury. And as you may have um, read in the papers yesterday, the judge allowed a a third degree uh, murder charge in Kentucky, which uh, is, uh, con it's the mindset, the state of mind uh, there is not an intention uh, but it's a depraved indifference. Uh, and what that means is that the jury doesn't have to find that he intended to do anything. Uh, rather, they could find that he was just indifferent yeah. to uh, a risk. Uh, That's dark. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm not and, sure what's worse. Uh, but. Yeah, well, that's that's a good point, but uh, <laughs> but but it's a it's another basis for the jury uh, to convict. But but look, uh, you never know what what happens when you go to a jury trial. So there could be a um, an acquittal, and if there is, I imagine there would be massive uh, uh, protests. Uh, if he's convicted, I, I I don't think that would happen. Because uh, I just don't see, at least nothing I've seen or read, suggests that there's a a big pro uh, Chauvin camp yeah, out there right. ready to well, protest. Well, there could be a Is there also uh, potential tensions that could arise from the sentencing? I don't know how that exactly works. Sort of not enough years kind of thing. Yeah, it could all be. That, all could that kind be. of stuff. I mean, it's a, a lot could happen. So it depends on what he's convicted of, uh, you know. One count, I think, is like up to 10 years. Another count's up to 40 years. Uh, so it depends what he's convicted of. And yes, it depends on how much of the, how much time the judge gives him if he is convicted. Uh, th th there's a lot of space for people to be very angry. And so we will, we, we will see what, what happens. I just feel like with the judge and, and the lawyers, there's an opportunity to have really important, long lasting speeches. I don't know if they think of it that way, especially with the cameras. Mm -hmm. It it feels like they have the capacity to heal or to divide. Um, do you ever think about that as a as a lawyer, as a legal mind, that your words aren't just about the case, but about they they'll reverberate through history potentially? Um, that is that is certainly a possible consequence of things you say. I don't think that most lawyers think about that uh, in the context of a case. Uh, your role is much more narrow. Uh, you're the partisan advocate as a defense lawyer, partisan advocate for uh, that client. As a prosecutor, you're a minister of justice um, attempting to prosecute that particular case. But the reality is you are absolutely correct that sometimes the things you say uh, will have a, a shelf life. It